So you just started investing and now you're thinking to yourself, hey, I wanna grow my portfolio and I want to invest outside South Africa. How can I actually do that? Well, in today's video, that's exactly what I'll be sharing with you. I'll be showing you the tools and the techniques that you can utilize to invest outside South Africa and how to find shares, bonds, and commodities that you can invest in. And you guys know the drill. To show you all of this, I'm gonna share with you what's on my computer screen. So let's go. So before we look at the platforms that we can utilize to invest outside South Africa, the first thing I want to do is just remind you that whenever you are investing, all that you are ever doing is buying a share certificate. So a share certificate is basically a certificate that certifies that you own part of a company. So if you're buying shares of ShopRite, all it's saying is that you own a piece of ShopRite. If you buy shares of Sunlum, all that the certificate says is that you own a piece of Sunlum. It works the same way with every other company in South Africa, and it works the same way pretty much everywhere else in the world there are a few differences based on whether it's asia or europe or the united states but the principle remains the same when you are investing you are buying a piece of a company and so how do we then access the markets the market being where we actually buy pieces of these companies the way we do that is through what we call stock exchanges stock exchanges there's a very simplified explanation of them are just basically auction houses where shares get auctioned off so where we come together as investors and we're able to buy and sell shares from each other now there are a lot of other players that are involved such as market makers and other um, institutions but the simple way to understand this is this just like you get a property auction or a car auction the market is just basically a large auction and in order in order for us to access this auction we have to go through via brokers why because the auction is so big that we need some type of platform or system that enables us to access the auction and that's where brokers come in so companies like easy equities all they are just basically systems that enable us to access various auctions around the world so this would be one way to first start off investing overseas you could use easy equities i am going to show you um two other platforms that are much more advanced so for example if you want to invest in the united States, easy equities is an option, uh, Europe, easy equities becomes an option, the UK and Australia as well. But what if you really want to invest and likely use a, a platform like Interactive Brokers? So this is an American company and it's one of the biggest brokerage platforms um, in the world. And by big, I mean one of the largest companies that are in this space. They are also a listed company, meaning you can actually buy shares of Interactive uh, Brokers. And so they're a pretty large company, manage a whole lot of money and have a lot of clients. And so if you want to buy shares in Italy, in France, um, in Spain, in Portugal, this would be the platform you do it. And so South Africans can do this very easy. All you have to do is just open up an account with them. It takes like a week, submit your details, meaning just your ID number or passport, and um, just send through whatever else they ask for. And then your account will be verified and you'll be able to deposit money and then start investing. That's how simple it is because of technology. So Interactive Brokers is a pretty good platform. It's actually one that I use for my personal investing as well. You can see they've got a list of um, countries here and this isn't just everything that they have um this list is pretty short compared to everything else that they have on the platform so there's quite a lot that you can do um there's research tools that are available um on the platform as well such as bond scanners and by the way when you want to buy bonds from pretty much anywhere in the world interactive brokers will be the platform that you're using so if you want to lend money to the nigerian uh, government interactive brokers will be where you do that if you want to lend money to the argentinian government interactive brokers is where you'll do that now i wouldn't lend money to any of those governments because uh, some of the debts are quite high risk but if you want to do that this would be the place uh, for you uh, to do that and so they've got quite a lot of interesting tools and just like easy equities um to open up a trade works the exact same way remember all these platforms are basically the same thing they're just basically systems that allow you to access an auction house which is a stock exchange so i'll just use eToro here as a quick example um, if I want to invest, say, in other places around the world, eToro is another platform that I can actually utilize. You can see here they list the various exchanges that are available. So these two, the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, these are in the United States. London, Frankfurt, obviously, um, are in, in their own countries. Frankfurt being in Germany, London being in the UK, Sydney in Australia, Hong Kong being in Hong Kong or China, um, and then Paris in France, Milan, Italy, etc. And you can see the list of different exchanges here that are available. So if you want to buy shares in any of these countries or the shares that are listed in any of these stock exchanges, this is how you would do it. You could use eToro um, or you could use Interactive Brokers if it's something that's not available on easy equities. Now, when it comes to how you do the research, 
it's pretty much the same thing anywhere you go in the world. Um, there's a lot of research approaches that are available for you to actually utilize when it comes to investing. Um, the one that I prefer in most cases is a macroeconomic approach, where basically what I do is I try to identify issues and problems around the world, and then I identify economic themes, then I identify market themes. I'm not going to go in depth in terms of explaining what these are, but basically economic themes are the the, the, the sort of issues that are, are prevalent in, in our world. You know, So what world problems do we have or what conversations of the economy are being spoken about? So this could be things like agriculture, energy, so electricity, mining, um, all of those are economic themes. So how are we going to get materials to build the world? That could be an economic uh, theme. So all of that, I look at that and then I categorize these issues into uh, themes. So the issues that I find, I categorize them into particular themes. And then I ask myself uh, some questions, you know, uh, which companies or which industries are addressing these problems around the world? And then I dig deeper into sectors and industries. And then I ask another question which companies are actually solving these problems and can actually make money from solving um, these problems. Then there's a few other things that I do as well. But essentially what I'm trying to do is identify companies that are going to be able to make money from solving problems in the world. Why? Because my belief is that those will be companies whose share prices will increase. Why? Because the earnings are going to increase. Markets generally are always chasing what we call earnings. Earnings is basically the money that companies um, are making. So I try to create a story, basically. That's, that's what I try to do. And then I test that story out in the real world. Then you have to get, basically, um, you have to have resources for your stories. So there's various places that you can get information from. Uh, some of them would be new sites like Bloomberg, Business Day, Reuters. Um, Bloomberg and Reuters have some very interesting tools. For example, Bloomberg has the terminal and Reuters has Akeon, uh, which is basically a tool that allows you to see various information around the world. Um, but for us lay people, the tool that I prefer is TradingView. It offers a lot of information. And then for really, really rich economic data, I'll use something like the World Bank um, or the IMF our website. And then obviously for something that's local like South Africa, the Reserve Bank and StatSA do publish um, data as well that you can actually utilize to understand what is going on in the country. And then the World Economic Forum has an amazing uh, tool as well that allows you to understand what are the big major economic long-term uh, themes. And that way you can build a long-term portfolio using these resources remember all that you're trying to do is ask yourself the question how is the future going to be like who's going to be solving problems in the future and who's going to be making money from those problems and can i buy those shares today to benefit from them um the model is pretty simple all that we are ever doing as investors is basically asking ourselves a simple question is the share price i'm looking at right now a discount to the price in the future so if i look at the share price of say a company like nvidia um so this was something analysis that i did back in january uh, 2023 there was a very simple question when the price of nvidia was 483 dollars at that time which was this is the price that i was looking at that time a discount to what the price was going to be in the future and if it is a discount then that presents an opportunity for me to actually buy the share if it's not a discount meaning the present price is potentially higher than the future price then obviously i wouldn't invest in that because the share price will go down and if i'm forced to sell at a lower price then i will lose our money so you pretty much apply you can pretty much apply this model anywhere in the world all you actually need is just the platform. So you can do research on companies and then just choose which platform you're going to use to buy the shares. Remember, all platforms are, are just basically a vehicle for you to access a stock exchange, to access the auction where the shares are being bought. Preferably, I like our local um, brokers, mainly Easy Equities, uh, FNB Zero, Shift by Standard Bank. Those are the ones that I really, really like because um, they're easy to use and easy uh, to just navigate. But you can use a platform like eToro or Interactive Brokers, depending on your budgets. For Interactive Brokers, I'm not going to say you need a lot of money, but this is more preferable because of some of the administration that's involved for a person who has maybe $1,000 and up, so about 18,000, 17,000 rand. For eToro, um, you should at least have $2,000 and then you'll be able to use uh, the platform. Or you can just use Easy Equities, which you've got $1, you can actually uh, start investing. And remember, the way that you buy shares pretty much is the same thing with every platform. All you're gonna do is find the share that you're looking for, and then you're going to enter the price um, that you want to buy it for, or you're going to make a market order, and then you'll go ahead and actually enter the, the, the trade. And there's always a buying price and a selling price um, for the stock. So the buying price is basically the, the price that you buy for. The selling price when you own the share would be the price that you sell uh, for. So essentially what you always want to see is that in the future, the selling price is higher than the price that you paid um, as the buying price. Now I can go into details in terms of what the words ask and bid mean here, but I'll quickly just simplify it. All that you're seeing when you're looking at the buying price is the lowest price that someone who 
who's selling right now is asking for. That's why it's called the asking price. And then if you, let's say you're an owner of the stock and you wanted to sell it, um, the bid price is the highest price that you can get right now for the shares that you um, want to sell in the market. That's essentially what it means. But obviously, if you want to learn more, then you can click the link um, in this video and then you can sign up for my investing mentorship uh, program where you'll learn a lot more about the in-depth intricacies um, of the market. But that's how you can invest um, internationally, guys. It's actually very simple. All you need to do is just open up an account at one of these platforms. It takes literally, um, for eToro, it takes a day. For interactive brokers, it can take about three to four days. Um, in fact, eToro can take even faster. Um, in fact, five minutes, but that's all you actually need to actually open up an account and then start investing um, internationally. Okay, great. Thank you for joining me for today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you're interested in any of my programs, then click the link in my bio to either um, join some of my programs or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until then, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.